Hello everyone, welcome back. What an exciting time of the year. We of course still have tons of snow and we're still skiing, but a few days ago, grackles and red-winged blackbirds showed up at my bird feeders, which they emptied in about an hour. But this time of the year, I don't mind sharing with them because it's slim pickings out there. They've just spent a lot of energy getting here and they're getting ready for their nesting season. Speaking of nesting season, as you can see my beautiful American Kestrel box is here. We were all ready to go and put it up on one of our trees. And then as I was doing some research, I came to realize if we want our American Kestrels to have a successful brood, we have to make sure that no predators can get into that box. So we have to have a predator guard, which is kind of impossible to install on a tree. So now we have to wait until all the snow melts and the ground softens up a bit to install this box on a post with a proper predator guard all my other smaller birdhouses actually on metal poles with baffles. We might miss American Kestrels this year, but at least this will be ready for next year. And it's not actually guaranteed that a bird will take to your nesting box right away. Steve Swearingen in Texas had to wait two years for a screech owl to find his box and to move in. So if you can, please install your nesting boxes on a post or a pole with proper predator guards. If that's not a possibility, you can attach it to a tree. Just keep a close eye on who is using that box. During a cold spell, Claire noticed that a lot of her backyard birds were fluffing their feathers to stay warm, but her cardinals didn't seem to do that, so she was just wondering how they managed to stay warm. Hi Claire. Even though you might not be able to detect it, your cardinal likely does have some air trapped under those feathers. But they don't always need to fluff out their feathers to trap air and warm themselves. Birds in general also have a very high metabolic rate and they engage in a physiological process called shivering thermogenesis. It's akin to our behavior of shivering when cold, except that it's imperceptible to our eyes. This process, which is especially important to birds in the cold temperatures of winter, requires a great deal of energy, and that's why they're constantly foraging for food. In the late summer and early fall, prior to the onset of winter, almost all birds feed constantly to add to the fat stores in various parts of their internal body. Since birds don't have layers of fat or feathers to protect their totally exposed legs and feet, they can reduce the blood flow to these extremities to a trickle in really cold temperatures, such as the tissues still receive nutrition, but the heat is retained in the body. Finally, someone actually counted the feathers in sparrows in summer and winter and discovered that the birds actually grow more feathers in their winter plumage than in summer. Just over a week ago, we planted our seeds and broccoli has already sprouted. So all I'm thinking about now is planting and gardening. And this summer, I actually want to add a couple more native trees to our backyard. So I wanted to make sure that we get the right trees. So in my search, I found an app that was designed by the Canadian Forest Service for us Canadians. It helps us find the right trees for the right backyard. So check it out if you're in Canada. I couldn't find the same kind of app for the United States, but there is a website that has a tree finder. There are a few more steps involved to find the right tree for your area. So check it out. I hope you will find this helpful if you are thinking of planting some trees in your backyard this summer. Well, here's a concept I've never heard of in the world of ornithology self-medication in birds. It has been documented in a wide variety of organisms ranging from tiny fruit flies to elk. A recent study published by a team of scientists working in various facilities in Madrid, Spain, focuses on self-medication in arguably the heaviest flying birds in the world. Great bustards, which I have never had the pleasure of seeing in the wild, can tip the scales up to 30 pounds but can still manage to get their portly carcasses up into the sky. Sporting a plumage with unique colors, more on that later, they breed on grasslands from Western Europe and Northwest Africa to Central and Eastern Asia, with more than two-thirds of the entire population calling the Iberian Peninsula home. Great bustards have now joined the ranks of macaw parrots in seeking out certain plant foods to self-medicate against disease. They look for two plants in particular, 
two weed species called corn poppies and purple vipers bugalus, which are also sought by humans for traditional medicine, such as pain relief, sedation, and immune system boosting. For the bustards, both plants contain antiprotozoal and nematode worm killing compounds, while purple vipers bugalus also contains antifungal agents. Analyzing 623 poop samples from wild bustards, the Spanish research team found tissues from stems, leaves, and flowers of 90 plant species. The two weed species were found in amounts much more than expected in the bird's diet, suggesting that they actively seek them out as food, particularly in the breeding season. My guess is that those males who actively find and consume these two useful plants are more likely to be selected by females for mates, perhaps through enhanced plumage coloration, suggesting strong immune systems, but more research is needed to bear that out. I wanted to talk to you about Baltimore Orioles right now because they're going to hit everybody's back here any day now. Well, a little bit later for us here in the north, sort of mid May, but everywhere in the south, they are already migrating. And I also wanted to make sure that you recognize their song because that's what helped me understand that I actually had Baltimore Orioles in my backyard and that's what prompted me to run to a grocery store and get oranges for them. So here's their song. And do you know why they're called Baltimore Orioles? Well, uh, a few centuries ago, Maryland used to belong to the Baltimore family. Guess what their family colors were? Black and orange. And a uh, long time ago, when European settlers came here and when they saw American birds, whichever birds resemble European birds, ended up with those European names. Well, the Baltimore Oriole resembled uh, Old World Orioles, especially the Eurasian Golden Oriole, hence the name the Oriole. Female and male Baltimore Orioles are super easy to tell apart. Females are just not as bright orange as the males. And it was actually female Baltimore Orioles that came uh, to my backyard first. They were checking out suits and they were the first ones to get closer to the house and check out those oranges that I was offering to them. But we also noticed that the two springs that they stayed consistently in our backyard and were feeding on those oranges was the time when we didn't have a dog. Since we got our new dog, it's not as easy to keep them around. So I have to actually set up my Baltimore Oriole feeding area way in the back of my backyard where the dog doesn't spook them. Lynn from Orlando had a Baltimore Oriole at her hummingbird feeder for weeks. It's just left, so if you're in the southern states, get your grape jelly, your oranges, your suets ready, because Orioles are certainly on the move. If you find grape jelly too messy, which I do, you can just buy purple grapes, mash them up with a fork, and serve them like this in the bowl. Uh, Orioles love fruits, they even eat apples here. And don't worry, you won't have to serve oranges all summer long because it gets kind of expensive. Once there are plenty of bugs and they start their breeding season, they'll disappear. Some of them will actually start their fall migration as early as late July. It's mostly females that build a nest and because their breeding season is so short, they only have one brood and just like many other songbirds, it's four to five eggs on average. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Enjoy migratory birds. This is truly the best time of the year. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.